Matthew, how are you doing? I'm okay, thank you. Great to speak to you. Matthew, um, there's so much. Um, you guys at Matchroom is also green for dogs, of course. No thanks to uh, the pandemic. I know that it also affected uh, the, the game of dogs. And uh, um, when, uh, what is next for you guys at Matchroom? The big challenge for us now is when we're going to have fans back into our events. You know, it's just over a year ago since we were, were last able to have a, a large crowd. We had a very small one at Christmas for one night, but um, we're hoping to be able to get fans back into our events in the next few months over the, the summertime period here in the UK. Um, and then hopefully by the back end of the year, we'll be back to, to normality. But we're very proud that we've been able to stage events and... Um, Keep the players uh, able to participate, able to, to to be able to participate competitively over the last twelve months, and fulfil oh. our obligations to, to broadcasters and to our fans. All right, fantastic. Uh, have you been able to manage some of your sponsors during this period? I mean, uh, have you been able to manage them just to make sure you guys are on the same page? Well, yeah, you have to have a good relationship with your sponsors. You know, where if you if you struggle to deliver in one area because of certain restrictions, you have to over deliver in other areas. So our sponsors have been very patient, and we're very grateful for their support. Um, and I think that we're repaying them as best we can, and and hopefully they'll stay with us for for many years to come. Most of them that we have at the moment, we've had for a long time, and they're very committed partners of ours. All right. Let me let me come here because now I'm going to talk to you about TV. Um, the the game on TV here in, in Africa as well as Nigeria. Some time ago, um, the, my my partner here, Joe, had um, um, used to have the rights for Terrestrial, you know, the Dads World Championship and some of the rights. But now it's difficult to come by on the continent of Africa. And one of the ways, and this is one of the ways to promote the game on the continent. How do we? Bring back the glory days by getting um, Nigerians and Africans to watch some of us so that they can get inspired. Well, I think for us, I mean, Nigeria and the, the wider continent of Africa is obviously a, a developmental market for us. It's not a market where we're at the moment particularly strong or well known. So getting in front of as many people as possible with as big an audience as possible is our key priority. Um, we've had broadcast partners in the past, as you know, as you've, as you've alluded to. And we will do again in the future. And our aim would always be to get as big an audience as possible for our products in order to improve the, um, the knowledge base and the awareness of, of the fans. Because we know there's an appetite for um, both darts and cue sports across Nigeria and across Africa. It's just making sure that people have the opportunity to watch the events and learn and understand more about them. Uh, maybe I will ask, uh, Joe will ask this question because he was in charge of uh, the broadcast content then, he was in charge of the uh, rights and maybe there's questions they want to put directly to Matthew now. <laughs> so Joe, over to you. Um, I recall when we wanted to bring professional darts to Nigeria, one of the challenges we had was that people were playing darts more like a game than like a sport. Hmm. So it was important we introduced professional darts and darts as a sport to the Nigerian darting community. And I recall then there was a concession somehow that was offered to Nigeria for us to, to come and play in the World Cup of Darts at that particular time. Unfortunately, we have struggled at getting professional darts started in this country. From your experience, uh, especially for those who have been watching this program. Uh, how did South Africa, because I know South Africa through SADO has benefited greatly from what uh, PDC is doing. How did they do it how, so that we can learn from it and maybe use that as a template to help Nigeria come to speed? South African darts had one big asset, and that asset was a guy called Devon Peterson, who gave up his life in South Africa to come to the UK and to Europe and to be a professional player. Now, I'm not expecting lots of other players to jump on an aeroplane and follow him to do that, because clearly it's expensive. You have to make a lot of sacrifices, 
and it's it's a high risk strategy. It worked for Devon, and he's a very switched on guy, and he's able to transition from being just a player to also being an organizer. So he's organizing events as well with his contacts across South Africa. So the key for um, a, a country like Nigeria, for example, would be not necessarily to look to start from the top and work down, but to start from the bottom and work up. The way that Nigeria will produce a professional dart player is to have a strong pool of local talent who play against each other in a competitive, well-organized environment on a regular basis that improves the standard, that improves people's desire to play. It will improve the amount of interest and investment in the sport. And then the standard will increase naturally. And in time, there will be players who will then decide that they're ready to play internationally. At the moment, that may not be the case. It may be that players just have the resources or the appetite to play locally. But over time, as there's more uh, African players or Nigerian players playing competitive darts, then by definition, the standard will improve and they will become ready to compete on the world stage. How do we get Nigerians or Af more Africans on that stage so that if we get them on that stage, somehow more and more people will get attracted to the sport? To both pool, snooker, and even that, that most especially because I'm a lover of darts. But whether it's pool or darts or snooker, the key for us is to build relationships with local organisers. So if you're the local darts association in, in Nigeria or the local pool association in Nigeria, then reach out to us. Tell us, about, tell us about what you're doing. Tell us about your players. Tell us about where you play, your competitions, your standard. And we will give you some help and advice and, and, and try to get you to a position where you've got more players playing competitively against each other on a more regular basis because that is what will drive the standard up. And then once you get to the point where um, the players are ready to compete internationally, then those doors will open. The, the key thing, if a player is not ready to compete on the international stage, then putting them in that position can be damaging because it won't, they won't be able to do themselves justice and they won't be ready to, to, to be the best that they can be. Whereas to take that little bit of extra time and improve their standard, get to a level where they can compete with the best in the world, because our, our events, our pool events, our snooker events, our darts events, they have the best players in the world, not just the best players in your town, but the best players in the world. No, so no. If, if, if you're ready to compete with those players, it doesn't matter where you're from. We want you in the events. The last time, you made some concession that we, especially in Nigeria, uh, would, would give you an opportunity to play, especially in the World Cup of Darts. Is that offer still open? Look, as I sit here now, I'm not going to make that offer because I don't know anything about the players. I don't know what standard they play to. I don't know what competitions they play in or anything like that. What I will say is, that when I do know more about that, when you send me more information, when I, when I can see videos or whatever of these guys playing and I can see how committed they are, um, then we will do whatever we can to help them get more opportunities on the big stage. But we can't just make blind invitations. You know, we, we need to know uh, who, who, what, who the local organisers are, what events they're putting on, what the standard is, um, you know, and what the aspirations of the players and the local um, darts association is you know we've we've built relationships with darts associations all around the world that have given us exactly that level of commitment and that that invitation is open to nigeria 24 7. good i agree with you totally matt i agree with you so we'll look at that and we are also looking at uh, uh, what we're hoping to uh, you know things that can help uh, Promotes as well as uh, promote as well as develop the game. Yeah, I mean, we're always we're we're always open to developing our sports in new markets, especially markets where there's a large local population who already play the the games at an amateur level. So we look for certain things. We look for an interest level from fans through TV broadcasts, through social media. Um, we look for as I said, a large number of local players who are already showing that there's an interest level. And then we look for uh, partners who we can join with to jointly promote the sports and, and to grow their audience and, and grow the, or improve the standard that local players play at. So my, my um, comment to you would be that the local organisers for darts, for pool, 
um, you know, are the people who um, can reach out to us and we can discuss how we can mutually uh, work together for, for the overall benefit of the sports in Nigeria and across Africa. One of the, one of the greatest challenges you have in Africa, which is not similar to what you have in Europe, America, and Asia, is the challenge of sponsorship. In the last attempt we tried to make with that, uh, it was almost difficult getting sponsors to even have a look at the sure, content. Yeah. yeah, it's very difficult. You know, obviously with the global pandemic that we've all been through over the last 12 months, people are not spending the same level of money as they maybe were before. So what was already difficult is now increased, increasingly difficult. Um, I think the key is to find local partners who can get some reward from uh, their association with, with sports, such as darts and pool, whether that's people coming into their bars or their clubs or buying their products. You know, they're the kind of sponsors who at a local level um, could, could be beneficial. But it's a challenge that we face even at the top level. You know, people are not necessarily spending the money that they were before. So sponsorship is very, very difficult. And we have to be creative and work that little bit harder. But before I get to go back to you, this is like an exposure for us here at the end of this. What are the strategies you would really advise to, to take on? Because I know that you know it's a difficult time, difficult period, because um, um, the, when we were going, when we are launching, we are going to be going back to some of those people. If you are just to just give us some pep talk to prepare us ahead of uh, the challenge we were facing, what would you say? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think the key question is, if, especially if you talk about it in respect of sponsors, to mm -hmm. say not what they can do for you, but what you can do for them. You know, how can you benefit them from their involvement with you? Um, and that's everything through from the players to the organisers, to the venue, uh, to the media, you know, every every aspect of it. It needs to be a full service. I will say that uh, it is a pleasure talking to you today, Max. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on, guys. Enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure.